The story you tell him is just a mite far-fetched. I'm telling you, a man has disappeared. What is this place? She started telling me some cock and bull story about creatures from outer space. They've got him. Who? The aliens. Why would somebody deliberately upset the radar? To keep you from seeing what was in the area. Oh, don't tell me. Let me guess. Now, all of a sudden, a flying saucer swooped in and got you, right? It's close. Tell us that nothing's going on here. That nothing jams the radar and lights up the sky. <laughs> Sunday. You've got to listen to me. I am listening. It's just that the story you're telling me is just a mite far-fetched. I'm telling you, a man has disappeared, Sheriff. Without a trace, without... A word to you. I told you he's a forest ranger. He was stationed at that place up on top of the mountain. Miss Anderson, I know both of them boys up there. And there's no one else with them. Oh, fine. I didn't just imagine his existence. If a good-looking fella gave you some story about him being a forest ranger, I'm sorry. Now, if you want to make out a missing persons report, that's fine. You know something about his disappearance, don't you? Miss Anderson, I got to deal with every single one of them reports before I can even get out of here tonight. There's nothing more I can do for you. Well, there's something I can do. Just go home. Sure rage through here. This is a waste of time. You know that, don't you? Joe Sharon's letter said she that lost, she lost her boyfriend him. and she didn't know where to find him. Since when have we become the Lonely Hearts Club? <sighs> Look, Joe, Las Vegas isn't going to disappear. I assure you, it'll be there in all its glory when we arrive. We're just going a little bit out of our way to help an old friend. Three hundred miles. Besides, she was more your old friend than my old friend. If you remember, she had quite a history of emotional disorders. If you mean highly strung, yes, I remember. But she was frightened. That's what I got from the letter, and that's why we're here. We may be staying here for quite some time. Right here. Well, according to the map, the gas station is supposed to be up around this bend somewhere. Oh, 
from the wonderful people who brought you the fire. We're here. If we stay on this road and go around the mountain, it's about 20 miles. But if we go up here, see, over the mountain, it's only about 12 miles. If we can get over that ridge, it should be downhill from there. Should be. Well, is that a walk? I've always found your logic compelling, Frank. Don't worry, Joe. I got a good feeling about this. I'd hate to be around you when you have a bad feeling. Well, it was worth a try. At this point, I'd ask you what we were going to do, but since we're out in the middle of nothingness and there isn't a soul in sight, I'd say walking is our only alternative. Joe. Take another look. I don't believe it. Is that a problem? Yeah, we're out of gas. We tried to make it to the top of the mountain, figuring we could coast on down to justice. As you can see, we didn't quite make it. You wouldn't happen to have a gallon of gas with you, would you? Sure do. Should have enough to get you where you're headed. Hi, how are you? Fine, thank you. How long ago did this happen? Three weeks. It was a big one. I'm told you could see it burning 80 miles away. Take a lot of men to bring it under control? Sure did. Brought in 50 men from all over the state. You know how it started? Probably a smoldering cigarette. Firebreak put it out? That's right. You're all set. Oh, great. Thanks a lot. We appreciate your help. Can we pay you for the... Oh, it's on the house. Oh, we'll say, uh... Better turn around and head back into that road that leads into justice. Uh, this road isn't safe after the fire. Oh, well, we've come this far. I'm sure we can make it. It's probably only six or seven miles. I'm afraid we're going to have to insist. Not safe. Well, if it's not safe, it's not safe. Okay, thanks again for the gas. Station four secure. Just a couple of guys who'd run out of gas. No problem. Good work, Benny. You then. Ten four. Place. It's good to see you. It's good to see the both of you. I'm very grateful. I know coming here was far out of your way. Oh, no, it's no problem. Your letter sounded urgent. And I told you about Peter. Yeah. We met here. Then one day he didn't show up. And I never saw him again. Hasn't anyone else seen him either? He simply disappeared. He was working with the Forest Service up on Rangers Mountain. I called up there several times. They told me they'd never even heard of a Peter Harris, that he'd never been a ranger. Did you tell the sheriff what you're telling us? Yes, but he wouldn't help. He told me I'd probably just been jilted and that Peter wanted to avoid the big scene with the broken-hearted local girl. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking that they're trying to protect me, my friends. But I think they're trying to protect themselves. Themselves? A lot of people have been seeing things around here. Things? One night, I drove up to Rangers Mountain to look for Peter. I saw them myself. Sharon, what do you mean by them? 
I'm not sure. I blacked out. You blacked out? Why? What happened? The sheriff says I, I probably hit my head. I'm not so sure. If I tell you, you'll just think I'm the same neurotic little girl you used to know, and I'm not. I've grown up a lot in the last five years. There was a light in the sky. The way it swooped down on me, it, it was... It was... It was what, Sharon? It was unearthly. Unearthly? I know. It sounds crazy. Oh, look. Just forget everything I've told you. Forget I ever asked you up here. Maybe I am crazy. Yeah, sure, I remember. I mean, after all, ain't every day in a week you pull a lady out of a ditch talking about strange things in the sky. She said that? Strange things in the sky? Was that in the report? What report? Well, I assumed you filled out some sort of... Look, uh, what are you two trying to stir up here anyway? Look, we're not trying to stir anything. We're just trying to find out what happened to Sharon that night. And her boyfriend. A <laughs> boyfriend again. I ain't got enough problems with the county judge ordering me to hire an equal number of women as men in my department. Now I'm supposed to run a Lonely Hearts Club for transients. Actually, all we wanted to know was what kind of a follow-up you did to check out Sharon Anderson's story. Oh, that's all you want? Yeah. Sort of it. Yeah. Okay. I'll tell you. None. That's how much. Now, what do you think of that? Was that your usual procedure? No. No. Only when I'm uh, following up a complaint from a ding -a -ling. That's not a very flattering reference. <laughs> Look, uh, what do you call a broad... Excuse me. A lady who falls asleep at the wheel right in the middle of the main road. She could have killed herself or ran head on into some busload of people. No, I uh, picked her up out of the ditch and she started telling me some cock and bull story about creatures from outer space. Just lifting her sweet soul up in the air, car and all, and deposited right in the middle of my jurisdiction. Now, I think you can understand why I didn't put that in my report. I was doing her a favor. I mean, the judge would have asked me uh, why I didn't book her for uh, drunk driving. Had she been drinking? Drinking, popping pills, I don't know. I just decided to take her home and call it even. I mean, she uh, did have a pretty big uh, bump on her head, you know, and I felt kind of sorry for her, you know, losing her boyfriend and all. This is a small town, guys, and I try to give people benefit of the doubt. Well, that sounds reasonable. Well, thank you. Of course, uh, don't always apply to uh, nosy strangers. Well, I think we catch your drift, Sheriff. Frank. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Sheriff. That's it. What's it? We had trouble deciding whether to fly or drive to Nevada, remember? Yeah, how could I forget it? It seems like only yesterday. So before we left, I checked out the Justice Airport on Dad's charts. It's very thorough of you. I don't see how it's very important, though. Well, the airport is ILS. They have instruments, radar. So? So the mountain road Sharon was driving on is within radar range of the airport. If she saw anything in the sky, then the airport would have picked it up in their radar screens. Maybe someone remembers seeing it. Oh, no, Frank. You're not? No, 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 no. We just got finished making total fools of ourselves in front of that sheriff, and we both agreed that Sharon is obviously not playing with a full keyboard. Would you feel right living it up in Las Vegas, knowing we'd let Sharon down? You're bad. This may sound strange, but did you pick up anything unusual in your radar Sunday night? Nothing. Not a thing? Not a thing. The whole system went out about 10 o'clock. How long did it last? A couple hours. And, and you fixed it? No. No? Well, I didn't really do anything to fix it except turn it back on. And it worked. You had turned it off. Well, yeah, the thing had been out of whack for a couple of minutes, so I shut it down in case it was burning up inside. Why? What's this all about, fellas? Could it have been deliberate, your radar going out? Why would anybody deliberately upset the radar? To keep you from seeing what was in the area. Like what? That's a good question. Uh, let's go, Frank. Uh, why did you turn it back on? What do you mean? 
Well, isn't it usual to call in a maintenance crew? Oh, well, I, uh, <clears throat> I didn't want to feel foolish like the last time. The last time? Well, yeah, all they did was come out and turn the equipment back on. Radar worked like a charm. You mean these blackouts have occurred before? Oh, yeah, three or four times. I wasn't on duty the first two. So we figure it must have something to do with the radar overheating. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Come on, Frank. Oh, thanks. That's strange, though. What's strange? Well, every time the radar's gone out, it's been on our slowest night, Sunday. And our slowest traffic time, 10 o'clock, almost to the minute. Hard to figure a coincidence like that, isn't it? I knew it. Only you could turn a simple Dear John love story into the day the Earth stood still. The radar went out at exactly the same time that Sharon said she was forced off the road. It's a coincidence. And four times before, the radar went out the same time on the same day of the week. Is that a coincidence? It happens, Frank. I mean, what night is it? Sunday. Well, it's a coincidence. Look, I got one more thing. This isn't the way to Las Vegas. Right. This isn't the way back to town or to the airport either. Right again. Uh, no, Frank. I'm not. No, not going back to that ranger station. Look, Joe, I want to find out what happened to him. I want to find out what happened to Sharon's boyfriend. Right? The answer is not on the top of that mountain. Is the answer on the top of that mountain? You tell me. I don't look so worried. I don't think there's anything going on up there, do you? No. Well, I'd feel a lot better if it weren't. If it weren't what? Ten o'clock. Frank, look out! <laughs> Joe? Joe, you all right? Yeah, I think so. What is that thing? I don't know, it's just hovering there. I'm gonna see anything like it for life. Sharon was right. It is unearthly. It is real. And it's headed towards the top of the mountain. And that's where we're going? You licked. Come on, Joe, we're not licked. We're onto something big. I was afraid you were going to say that. they trying to keep out of here anyway? People like us. Joe! Come on. They were here, right here a few seconds ago. I'm not crazy, am I? Oh, no, I saw them too. How could they have disappeared like that? Too. Yeah, but we'll deal with the girl first. Uh, Miss Anderson? Miss Sharon Anderson? 
That's right. Uh, we'd like to ask you a few questions about uh, Peter Harris. Uh, do you mind if we uh, walk with you? No, I... What do you know about Peter? Are you friends of his? Uh, in a way. Let's take that walk, huh? All right. Thank you. It's open. Well, Sunday night's getting to be my night, isn't it? Now, don't, don't tell me. Let me guess now. You were uh, driving along the main highway when all of a sudden a flying saucer swooped in and got you. Right? It's close. I'm not in the mood for it, boys. And I've warned you once. Well, tell us again. Tell us that nothing's going on here. That nothing jams radar every Sunday night and lights up the sky and lives in the tops of those mountains. Sheriff, we're not leaving here until you talk to us. I knew it. I knew it. Uh, well, don't feel too bad. After all, you didn't have any choice. Now, just sit down there and make yourselves comfortable. Now, uh, Sheriff, uh, just for the record, which you seem to have trouble keeping, what's the charge? Suspicion of trespassing. A trespassing? Where? On U.S. government property. Who said we were trespassing on U.S. government property? Nobody had to say anything. You got red clay on your shoes. Now, there ain't but one place where that comes from around here. Now, uh, I'm going to make some phone calls just to see if you boys would get in any trouble or do any damage, all right? If we'd done any damage, you think we would have come waltzing in here? Sit down, will you? Just sit down. Don't say anything. I didn't say anything. Did you hear a word from me? I didn't say a word. I was thinking it. And you're right. what we get for going by the book. Well, I have to admit, our story was a little off the wall. Sharon could be in real trouble. But from who? Whoever's on that hill, they could have a pretty long reach. When was the last time you saw Peter? I'm not telling you a thing until you tell me who you are. Um... I'm Agent Thomas. This is Agent Stone of the Bureau. Peter Harris is also an agent. Now, Miss Anderson, there is a very, uh, very delicate government operation being carried out here. Peter's disappeared, but he did get one last message through to us, and in that message, he mentioned you. Do you understand what I'm saying here? If there's anything you can tell us that would help us to find Peter, anything at all, we would greatly appreciate it. They've got him. Who? The aliens. I know you're going to think I'm crazy. No, no, go on. Go on. There have been a dozen UFO sightings in the area. Strange flashing lights in the sky. Now Peter's disappearance. Oh, look at you. You don't believe me. What's the use? Now, Miss Anderson. Miss Anderson, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm very sorry. I can see there's, there's no use in trying to deceive you. You're right. Our operation does concern UFOs. Now, there have been more than a dozen landings in this country so far, so I think you can understand the situation we have here. They're up there at the ranger station, aren't they? Peter told you that? He said he was a ranger. From up on that mountain? That's right. Uh, Miss Anderson, uh, you've been a tremendous help. There's only one other question. There are two young men who've been asking questions about Peter. Yeah, they're friends of mine. They've been trying to help. Well, that may be, but this is no time for amateurs. All they're doing is putting Peter's life in danger. Okay, I can stop them. Good. Good, thank you. That'd be a big help. There's one other thing, and this is most important. Now, you mustn't repeat anything that we've said here. Not to anyone. You see, there's no telling how many people these aliens have under their control. Oh, no. They can do that? Miss Anderson, I'm afraid they can do anything.
Ranger station says everything's okay up there. You boys are free to go. Oh, that's terrific. On one condition. Well, what's that? That you get out of town right now. You got yourself a deal. Thank you, Sheriff. We really appreciate it. That's very kind of you. You got a swell town. Swell town. Do you realize you're making a U-turn in front of the police station? More importantly, Las Vegas is this way. Sharon's house is this way. Frank, we gave our word. You gave your word. Look, you can keep the van after you drop me off. You've lost control. And aliens have taken over your brain. I'm not leaving here until I find out who they are and what they want. Sharon, we're not completely sure of our facts, but your UFO story may not be as crazy as it sounds. Last night, we saw something that... I want you to stop it. I don't want you to go on with this. You want us to what? Uh, you don't have to keep looking for Peter anymore. He called me this morning. Long distance. <laughs> I guess I'm just not as grown up as I thought. He told me he was sorry he cut out on me and that he's just not the kind of person who handles goodbye well. But that's what the call meant. Goodbye. I feel so badly writing to you, making you come all this way. It's, it's no problem. We, uh, we're just sorry this had to happen to you. Isn't there something I can do to... No, no. Um, the, the drive was interesting. Sharon, are you sure? Are you sure you don't want us to stay? Yeah, I'm sure. I really need to be alone. Well, it was good to see you. We'll be on our way. The call of Las Vegas. Goodbye. Okay. Goodbye. You're not going to tell me you believe that story. I wanted to, but no, I don't. She was lying, and I can't understand why. Because she's in trouble? So is her boyfriend. Perfect. Perfect. You did exactly the right thing, Miss Anderson. Thank you. I'm really worried. Now try and be calm. Agent Thomas and I will get back to you in a few hours. You've got the government on your side now. Thank you. It's going to be okay now. You just sit tight. Let's go. Somebody got into her, I knew it. What do you suppose they're up to? Well, let's find out. Follow them? What else? Well, we were supposed to get out of town, remember? All right, just thought I'd mention it. See some identification here. Who are you? Wonderful. Wonderful. We got a wise guy on our hands. Police usually carry wallets with badges. Oh, is that a fact? The government. I'm Agent Thomas. This is Agent Stone. Now, you know what you two are doing here? Do you? No. You're meddling in a very delicate government operation. You know that? Oh, very delicate. You know what happens to citizens who meddle in delicate government operations? Not really. Well, I don't think you want to know. I'll tell you what I want you to do. I want you to leave town. I want you to leave town now and forget about what you've seen here. Hey, are you listening to me? I want you out of town right now. Do you understand me? Yeah, it's clear. Good. It's also not very legal. Now, they're right. We at least owe them an explanation. Our investigation in this town is at a very delicate stage. It's imperative that you don't get involved. It would wreck an operation that's taken us months to set up. Well, I guess the government knows what it's doing. Yes, we do. 
thank you for giving us the benefit of the doubt. Look, fellas, you're gonna read about all this in the newspapers. Now, can we count on you? Sure. You can count on us. And I didn't like the way those two guys handled themselves. Or us. Did you had a good look at their IDs? Come on, Frank, how many times do we have to be warned? I mean, first, the sheriff practically runs us out of town. Then Sharon asks us to butt out. And two government agents come out of nowhere and tell us if we're not out of town by sundown, they're going to separate us. Separate us? From our bodies. You're crazy. You're, you are totally nuts, Frank. What do you expect to accomplish by this? Look, Joan, we saw those white-faced beings here last night. There has to be an explanation. Nobody disappears into thin air. Not human beings, not aliens, nobody. I want to find out where those people went last night. Frank, look. The thing down the hill. What did I tell you? Come on. Does this look like something the forest rangers would have built? Stash this stuff wouldn't be too pleased about us finding it. Come on. sleeping in this bed. Mystery man. Too, Peter. Oh, okay. You see that? Did you hear that? Yeah, he called him Peter. The same approximate height and weight. But he looks nothing like the Peter in Sharon's picture. What do you make of that? What if this? What if what? That Peter has scars on his face and the bandages. Yeah, so? So come on. Come on, where? What are you doing? We ask him. We ask him. 
ask him if his name is Peter Harris, and we ask him what's going on here. Come on. Frank, I don't... Frank, 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 we don't know what we're walking into up there. strangers moving in their families? I don't think so. One thing's for sure, aliens don't play baseball. Come on. Hi there. Looks like they're having fun. Yes. Oh, what's the score? Score? Yeah, how many runs you got? You winning? We don't know how to play the game. Not all of us. You can play the game? Uh, yeah, but it's difficult to explain. You're new here. What's going on? Oh, no, well, we're new here, uh, my brother and I. They're not one of us. We should check this with Shano. Oh, well, we're going to see him ourselves. Thank you. Nice talking to you. Intruders. Yeah, I'll talk to Shane. Joe? Get out of here. But Peter, but nothing. Let's go back and tell Sharon what we've seen. Come on. Come on. So what are we going to tell her, Frank? Uh, that his weight and build are the same, but his face is different? What are you thinking? You're thinking something, I can tell. Those scars under his eyes. And those bandages. Yeah, what about them? I've seen them before. So have you. I have? Do you remember the Delano case? That's right, plastic surgery. I changed his face. Sharon, it's Frank. Look, I told you to go away. We hey, we found Peter. We've got to talk. So let's talk, gentlemen. I couldn't warn you. It's all right. We didn't think they were government agents. Well, what it comes down to, you've got something that we want, and we've got something that you want. Oh? Mm-hmm. Your lives. And the life of your friend Sharon here. And what is it we've got that you want? Access to the Fed's installation. We haven't been able to find the way in yet, and it sounds like you have. The Fed's? That's right, the government. They've got more than 50 witnesses up there. Defectors, ex-spies, people who need to change their identities. You probably saw those mummified faces running around in the woods. Well, they rounded them all up to protect them from people like us. But we just want one man. Peter Harris. Shall we talk a deal? Let me give you something to think about on the way up there. I'm not back here in exactly an hour and a half. Your friends are dead. Okay? Oh, yeah, and move them. Move them? Yeah, take them someplace. Take them to our favorite little resort. You see, that buys us a little insurance. Anything happens to me, Farina there gets rid of your friends, and no one will know where to come to save them. You do understand that. Yeah. We'll be out of here in 10 minutes. Right, let's go. Come on, move. Hey, you want
want to keep it down, kid. You know, we don't hardly need a speeding ticket up here. criminal types up here. Go on. Go on. Hey, you do that again and I'm gonna... Yeah? You'll do what? Let me tell you something. My brother's not gonna let your friend gun someone down in cold blood. You don't be so sure. You know, you can still get out of this. I mean, you haven't killed anyone yet. Why don't you let us go? You can take off. Get out. Now, look. I told you once. I don't want to have to tell you again. Shut up. Is this where they are? Son, my partner gets real nervous, you know that. I'm not going to ask you again. Is this where they are? Yeah. All right. Just remember one thing. If anything happens to me, your brother and that girl are in Never Never Land. I do hope you understand that. Okay, pal, come up here and point him out to me. You know, it's funny. You don't seem like the kind of guy who'd want to spend the rest of his life in jail for murder. I've had all I'm gonna take. <coughs> you shut up! <coughs> oh, Frank! Come on! Not at all. You think Peter's dead? Not if my brother had anything to say about it. I gotta hand it to you, kid. They did a great job on his face. Without your help, I would have never known who he was. So you knew they weren't government agents? We had a pretty good idea they weren't. How much farther is it, Frank? It's not far. Ah, perfect. Perfect. This is going to be easy.
Do you have any idea at all? I'm telling you, I don't know where he took them. All I know is that I made a decision that may have cost my brother his life. see you. Peter's fine. Everything's okay. How, how did you get away? What happened? I had a little help from Sharon. I didn't think you'd let him shoot him down in cold blood. Look, you don't have to explain. Frank told me everything. It doesn't matter. He told me. Oh. I didn't know what to do, Frank. I, I didn't know what to do. I, you did the right thing. Peter's going to testify against one of the biggest crime syndicates in the country. They've been looking for him for months. Well, how did they get on to where he was? They intercepted a letter that Sharon sent to Peter's parents asking about him. I wanted to find out if they knew where you were. I didn't get an answer. So it started out as a simple love affair, almost blew up an entire government operation. That's right. Are you still willing to testify? Yes, sir. Now more than ever. You know, I still don't understand what those lights were that forced Sharon off the road. A government helicopter, one of those big turbine jobs. When the townspeople started becoming aware that something was going on, we had to start moving to another spot. A helicopter at night was the best way to do it quietly. At least we thought so. We had no idea it would become a flying saucer. Was this entire installation built expressly for the people you're talking about? It was an old Nike missile base from the Cold War days, abandoned 10 years ago. It was a great secret hiding place. None of the townspeople knew it was here. It was secret. Sheriff, you knew about this all along. Well, yeah, I did. And I'm sorry I had to give you boys such a rough time, but I had my orders, you understand? We know that now. Of course, you could have been spinning a story. And maybe you really are from outer space. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.